but uh, there are very few resources for international student uh, which is basically the category of non resident uh, uh, taxes so i thought of uh, making this video uh, which can help uh, international student hello friends uh, today i'm making a video for especially for international students uh, for tax preparation uh, this is for 2020 tax year uh, we are doing it in 2021 for the 2020 tax year uh, there are many programs for the resident taxes like turbo tax uh, tax act uh, hr block but uh, there are very few resources for international student uh, which is basically the category of non resident uh, uh, taxes so i thought of uh, making this video uh, which can help uh, international student and what i have done in this video is i have divided this uh, video into different chapters introduction uh, like this is the introduction part then like we'll go through some of the tax forms uh, for resident deal in which all forms you will need uh, then like your w2 and fika taxes will then go through preparing the actual tax form and then what other forms you will need to prepare then where to file your returns state and city taxes uh, how to do those and have some closing statements so so this is basically the uh, chapters we'll be covering and uh, the chapter description will be in the youtube description so you can directly jump to the chapter if you're uh, making your taxes along with this video you can jump to any of this chapter and it becomes very easy to navigate uh, as we get started i just wanted to give you a brief background about me my name is sagar patil and i came to us uh, as an international student uh, I started uh, my tax preparation the first year. I wanted to get uh, uh, my taxes done, but uh, there was no resource available directly online. So I have to go to HR block, uh, like the advisors, to ask them about um, what all fees uh, they will charge. And they, char they told me something around like $100, $150. And being a student, I, I, I didn't have that much taxes. So it was a significant fee for me. I started learning about these taxes and I was uh, very interested. So I, I, I did my self tax preparation. I also helped a lot of my friends uh, to do a tax preparation. And from that time on, like I have been preparing taxes. So it has been nine years now I have been preparing taxes. And now I'm uh, going a step beyond. I am actually establishing a new venture, Credence Tax Consultants. And I am now a authorized uh, IRS preparer and e-file provider. Uh, without further ado, let's get started with uh, our tax forms. Uh, before we start all the tax advice and tax preparation, let me go through a legal disclaimer which I am supposed to do. So basically, this video or credence uh, tax consultant is no way be used as an official source of IRS for filing uh, taxes. Uh, like you can use our services when you hire our services, that's different. But uh, this video, if, if you just follow this video and something goes wrong, if you have made some mistake, uh, like we will not be responsible. That's just a liability thing, which I have to mention. Uh, use this just as a reference and help in preparing your taxes. But this is in no way replaces the IRS tax uh, instructions and guidelines. So please refer to IRS uh, instructions as an official source the taxpayer is ultimately responsible for his tax returns. So once we have this out of our way, a few more important points. Uh, the due date for filing taxes is April 15, 2021. And uh, if you have received by some chance uh, CARES Act stimulus payment, you are not supposed to get that payment. So uh, you have to report that to IRS and uh, uh, send it back to IRS. A few important points which I wanted to get uh, out of our way and now like uh, let's go to tax forms so iris uses tax form called 1040 to file your tax returns um, 10 is a generic name and it's divided now into two categories there's a resident portion and then there is a non-resident portion uh, in the resident it's just simply called 1040 uh, non-resident form is 1040 nr there, there was also a form 1040 nr easy but we don't have that uh, form anymore uh, just from this year they have completely redesigned this form and like it's into just one one zero four zero nr so all u.s citizens uh, file one zero four zero form for non-us citizens there are two irs tests uh, to determine if you can file the resident form or not uh, one is a green card test and the other one is substantial presence test 
so these two tests are required. Uh, international students who are on F1 uh, or J M Q visas can use the 1040 only if they are exempt from substantial presence test. Now, what is this substantial presence test? Basically, it determines how many days have you lived uh, and like if you are if you are applicable to uh, be a resident or not. Uh, but uh, as uh, F1 students are exempt from that test and there's a category and criteria how it is being exempt uh like we can we will go through that details when we when we look at that uh, one form 8843 um but uh, in simple language if i have to tell you if you're on f j m q visas and uh, have been in the country for less than five years on this visa basically you can be on another visa but like if you're on this visa for uh, less than five years you are generally considered non-resident alien and you should file form 1040 nr uh, most of the tax services and uh, they always do uh, the form 1040 so uh, that is the difference so 1040 nr this year irs has changed a lot of uh, things into form what they did is like they eliminated the uh, nr easy form that was a very short format of a form if you have a simple written you don't have to file this long form you can just get uh, things done in that short form it was like a one page form the 1040 nr uh, has been redesigned to match very closely with the 1040 form. So the resident and the non-resident form are like very look alike. Uh, they are trying to standardize all the forms, and uh, with that, like they have, uh, they have taken this step. So uh, everyone who uh, everyone now files this form 1040 NR, and there are some other forms which uh, need to be filed, like OI schedule. Uh, a and e c one two three we will go through that now so other forms which uh, which we need to file along with one zero four zero n r uh schedule o i uh this is called other information this form uh, is required and should be attached with all one zero four zero n r so it is a mandatory form you have to attach this form uh schedule a so this form is a itemized deduction form uh from your income uh if your home country has any tax treaties the uh, us uh, then uh, you can you can itemize some of those uh, for indian citizens specifically there is a special tax treaty between us and india so basically indian students can use uh, just like a standard deduction as as uh, like res residents so it is a very very big uh, tax uh, help i would say because of this treaty the other forms uh, such as uh, schedule nec schedule one two three are very less common not as much use for international students so uh, there is another form which is 8843 so this 8843 is known as statement uh, for exempt individuals and it is a mandatory form whether you are filing a return or not so uh, if you have not earned any income still you will have to file this form uh, if you have uh, if you're filing 1040 nr you have to send this form along with it so all these forms which i'm talking about there's a link in the description and you can go to that link to download all these forms i have like created a folder and some of the reference materials for you to go through those so um, as we were talking about the tax treaty i thought uh, it's very important to go into um, what the tax treaties are because that gives you a big card uh, tax advantage and deduction so uh, what these are is like um, uh, non-residents home country uh, like France or like uh, Germany or China uh, might have a tax treaty with uh, with US uh, for special students or scholars who are coming to US uh, to avoid the tax burden and avoid the double taxation back in their country and back in this country. Example of that is like uh, India and US as I was saying like have a tax treaty uh, the article is like article 21.2 which allows non-resident Indian citizens to use standard deductions just like uh, the US residents which significantly reduces uh, the tax um, burden and maximize the refund. Uh, similarly, like uh, another example I have is like uh, for a French student, a uh, French student uh, have uh, $5,000 uh, which they can deduct from their income and uh, if you want uh, me to dip dive into this tax treaties, uh, we can make another video. I have some more tax treaties for like more uh, common countries for international students like China. China has around like $5,000. Uh, there is no limit of how, many, how much time you have to stay to claim that. Uh, then uh, Germany has $9,000, Indonesia 2000 like 
just some numbers for reference you can go through and I have also uh, put some citation for the tax treaties. Uh, all this is sourced from IRS. So, okay. So, uh, getting to our third chapter, which is your income part, W-2 and, uh, and also like I'm touching on the one important point of FICA taxes. So, let me quickly go through that. Your W-2 is a statement from the employer reporting how much you have earned in that year. I have put uh, a sample W-2 uh, where uh, like the employer uh, shows their name, their address, the employee's uh, name, address, uh, like how much uh, tips wages they earned. Uh, so this can be your on-campus university job or off-campus employment while you are working on CPT or OPT. Uh, you should receive this uh, Till Jan end, I would say uh, some send it till early, some maybe a little late, but usually uh, you get it uh, before Jan. So okay, one important point. So if you have multiple W twos, you should add the wages and tax bill holding before entering on your one zero four zero N R. Uh, I've created a simple W two worksheet for you to like add uh, add your uh, incomes and like taxes and like that will just create a total. It's basically a sum. And what it does is like it also is a very good like this is the sheet uh, which I was talking to you about. So uh, so you can add like all your employers uh, like whatever income you are earning. Uh, it will like uh, I've shown like what is the source of this like W two like you get it from the box one, box two, box three, uh, not box three but box one, box two, uh, and yeah you add all your uh, how much income tax is withheld if there is any state tax city tax you you enter that it will give you a total and you can use this totals directly uh, directly into the form 1040 uh, i've also added like an estimated tax refund uh, here you can you can go and like you can actually if you put put any any income here like it will give you like a estimated that is just like my rough uh, uh, calculation if you if you're going with standard deductions but uh, if you have like a different deduction uh, like you can put it here and like you, you just edit this formula a little bit according to according to your choice and you can have like uh, your estimated tax refund so yeah uh, so this is the w2 type worksheet I have this now uh, also in the link uh, like you can go to that folder and you will file all these files forms uh, this worksheet uh, very useful uh, to do so one very important point which I wanted to mention here is any international student should not have any values in box 3 4 5 and 6 for the W2 because you are exempt from FICA taxes so you don't have to pay additional to the government uh, you are exempt from social security taxes and that saves you a lot of money so uh, as i have touched on this let's let's get into fika taxes and i can tell you why so international students are exempt from fika taxes if your employer is withholding any of this uh, show them this details i have this link and this link is also in the description so uh, this is from the irs website uh, it it clearly states that people on f1 student and uh, that you are exempt, uh, you save around 8% uh, additional taxes, uh, so make sure it is. Uh, if your uh, employer has already withheld withhold this uh, and they have not uh, settled with IRS, they can actually pay you back, refund you back within the year. Uh, if they have already settled with the IRS and send it to IRS, so you will have to request from IRS to get this back. For that there is a form 843 uh, form 8316 uh, you have to attach all of these forms along with your w2 and i94 uh, and also the employer's letter stating that uh, you they have withhold these taxes uh, because they didn't know that they have to uh, that you were exempt and uh, you send this package to irs and you should get uh, uh, get it refunded so it's it's significant money if uh, uh, like depending on your uh, tax bracket and it's always good to good to get that back. So that's the advantage for international students. Going to our next chapter, 
Uh, now we will start the actual preparation for 1040 NR. Till now I was just giving you some background so you get familiar with what are the W2s, what are the forms. So for this what I have done is I have taken like a most common scenario for international student. Uh, a simple tax return. Uh, simple tax return means like the only income is W2. You do not have any investment income. You do not, I'm, I'm supposing you are not trading into the share market or doing anything. Uh, like different source of income just from employment is a simple source of income uh, so this is the scenario which I'm considering which is very common with international students uh, you always use John Doe uh, the fictitious name uh, filing status is single dependent zero visa F1 uh, years in US three years uh, country of citizenship India uh, I'm taking India you, you can take any other country just you have to change um, the standard deduction which which i'm putting uh, because india has a treaty us india treaty which allows standard deduction amount so instead of that you just have to replace your country's uh, 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 exemption whatever they have given so only that change uh, is so you whichever country you are uh, like you can do that so this form may allow a lot of different source of incomes like because irs wants to cover all their bases but what I find strange is you may have different source of incomes, but that may violate your USCIS uh, immigration laws. So you have to be very careful when you are uh, reporting what you are reporting and what incomes are you earning in that year. Okay, so let's get started with the form. We will we'll go through this uh, 1040 in our form. We'll go through. Uh, we'll do the paper file for this return. As it is self-prepared, uh, you will have to sign and put all the required uh, information or else your return will be rejected. So make sure like you sign this. I'll go through the checklist again with you in the next part. Okay, so uh, let's get started with uh, preparing our 1040NR. And uh, what I thought would be more easier is to walk you through a pre-filled form which I have done uh, so that we spend more time in explaining stuff than me typing each and everything and like uh, we'll go through all the fields and I'll tell you the source of how and where the information uh, I have got and typed it in. So uh, starting from the first uh, box um, we are talking about the filing status. So IRS has recently changed this. Uh, there was a married box before single but now they are uh, uh, they replaced it with married filing separately. So basically, if you are married, you have to still click uh, click the married filing separately. You are not filing for your spouse. You are just filing for yourself. So uh, you do that. Uh, in our example, we have a single. So we will we'll go with the single. Uh, then like uh, this is simple. Uh, uh, our fictitious person, John Doe. Uh, home address. Uh, this is your US address. You put it in. Uh, I'm in Michigan. So I put my state and a zip code. Uh, have to put your SSN. This is important. So make sure you put your SSN in. Just put some access in, in there. Uh, foreign country, uh, our uh, fictitious person is in India. Uh, Maharashtra, taking a state and some zip code. Uh, at any time during 2020, did you receive, sell, send, exchange, otherwise acquire any financial interest in any virtual currencies? So, like bitcoins or anything if you are invested and done anything like that you will have to attach a statement and uh, because we are doing a simple tax return this is not a complex one it's not dependents um, our person doesn't have a dependent but basically for dependents I have to say the dependent has to be a US citizen to be to be claimed as a dependent um, so if you uh, dependents can be a child or a relative uh, anyone who you are supporting and they have to stay with you for at least uh, 180 days in a year so so our person doesn't have that so I'm, I'm not uh, not going to put anything there uh, income so which is salary tips uh, from W2 if you have multiple W2s uh, you have to uh, add all that and enter your income so I always refer to my tax uh, uh, w2 worksheet so from this we i've got this 36000 uh, which is the total of all the incomes uh, i have entered that into box 1a 
scholarship fellowship grants uh, have to uh, if you received any scholarship from the university uh, you uh, you might get uh, 1042s if it is other than your tuition fee sometimes uh, university do not send this because they might just cover your tuition fee but if they are covering your boarding or uh, any meals or anything else like they will send you like uh, like this form 1040 uh, 42s so whatever is the amount on that uh, just enter it in this box 1b uh, then 1c is your total income uh, exempt by treaty uh, as we are saying like this is an Indian citizen and because India and US has a treaty so we will be entering the standard deduction standard deduction for 2020 for single person is 12,400 so that's what is written entered here uh, tax exempt interest qualified dividends nothing of this applies because we are doing simple tax returns uh, the only income is W2 yeah just follow along uh, 000 for each of this uh, and then this is just simple math um, we carry over our income to box 9 36,000 uh, then there is some adjustments to the income so if you have a uh, schedule one which uh, uh, from 1040 you, you can enter that uh, details here uh, if you have done any charitable contribution and that is specifically for Indian citizens because the treaty allows you to do uh, 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 kind of charitable contribution uh, you can enter it here um scholarship fellowship grants so it might be any scholarship which you have received uh as a tuition so your 1042 if you have received the 1042 form from your university which states that you have received some scholarship and if that includes your tuition fee you can put that tuition fee uh and deduct it down here so like you just you just put that in here and once uh, that is there we just add all, all of those we have zero so zero and then like uh, we subtract basically this so if you had tuition fees here it, it will carry over to box 10d and then it will get subtracted from your uh, adjusted cross income so that this is how like the math is working so your box 11 is your adjusted gross income and that is obtained by subtracting box 10d from 9 so Following along, uh, itemized deductions uh, from Schedule A. So if you have um, any tax treaty, as I was saying, like as you have mentioned it up here directly, uh, if you are from France, you can directly mention it here. If you have some itemized deductions from uh, Schedule A, uh, if your country allows that, uh, you, can, you can do that. Uh, if not, uh, uh, you just enter whatever is the exempt amount um, in your tax treaty and you put it down here. So for India, it is 12,400 again, uh, there and then like, yeah, qualified business income, nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, and the final taxable income. So this is basically what you will pay tax on. So this is uh, mm -hmm. subtracting line 12 by line 11. So 36,000 minus 12,400 is 23,600. So you will be paying your taxable income is 23,600 in this scenario so line 15 is your taxable income go to line 16 and we have to now uh, so what is the tax on this income on this taxable income and to find that out there are multiple ways to find that out and um, the easiest way is to go to the tax table so so I have this file included in um, in the attachments uh, you can go there and like you can you can look this up uh, and what it is is basically like a table which has uh, income ranges and uh, income tax range there so how much income tax you are subjected to so we are talking about range of 23,600 23,000 like you always have to take the top one here so 2,638 so to be exact, I have put here 2,635. 
because if you go by formula which I have in my worksheet your tax liability is coming to 2634 with the formula if you would have gone with the table you could you would have put 2638 it's just like few few dollars but I always like to be exact so I always prefer the method of calculation than using a tax table but but it's completely up to you uh, if you don't want to have uh, um, like you don't care about this two three bucks I always would go back and do this so that's your income um, uh, income tax liability uh, then there are some uh, like other lines which we can put from schedule 2 like if there are any other deductions adding all of this then uh, 18 is just a calculation 2635 will carry over that amount and then another you will have like uh, from schedule 3 from line 7 and all of those have the details finally our tax liability is 2635 there are multiple things which you can deduct which are mentioned here not applicable in our case so 000, zero, zero adding all the lines and this is your total tax 2635 federal income tax withheld so now you have to look at your w2 and how much and we have our w2 worksheet we will just check there how much total uh, tax has been withheld so the total tax withheld is 4320 so going back uh, 4320 we enter there uh, if there were any other taxes which were withheld we will enter that uh, this is just 25d is just the calculation line uh, we will carry it over then all this doesn't apply 000, zero, zero. Uh, and now the difference between 4320 uh, 4, and 2635 is the amount you will get refunded. So, and that is calculated in, in line 34. So, this is which is like this is what you have overpaid, and this is what you will be receiving a refund from. So, all this calculation is very straightforward, nothing, nothing much here. Uh, have direct deposit of uh, uh, your account number of US bank you put it here uh, if you want the check to be mailed outside of uh, United not shown on page one so if you're already outside of United States and you have mentioned your address here as a foreign address already then you don't have to enter it here uh, so you just have to enter your uh, uh, if you have an, if you're already living in US, uh, have entered the US address, then you have to mention. And if you're not in US, you want the check sent mail to you outside of United States. You mention that address here, and IRS will send you the check to that address. Uh, enter, uh, and then there is also something called you can use some of this amount or uh, all of this amount for IRS. Like they can keep this amount. So if next year, if you don't want to pay. More taxes or maybe like uh, it's like estimated tax they can have it uh, already in their account and apply towards your next return so you can do that I never do that because I would rather keep the money in my account than IRS account so so you do that um, just in case if you if you owe money uh, like as we have done this calculation for tax if your tax liability is more than what was withheld you will have to pay IRS and for that you when you're doing the calculation you subtract line 33 from 24 so line 33 which should be smaller than your line 24 this is bigger because you are liabilities more you will have a positive number here which is actually the tax which will be paying so and there is an estimated tax penalty uh, usually uh, usually it is in some range uh, you can you can go through the instructions to see like how much is the penalty but if it is less than thousand dollars then like yeah there is there is not a lot of so like there is no penalty uh, you, you're covered and if you're filing it before april 15th like you are covered so don't worry about the penalty and calculating like let irs figure it out if you want like they can 
they will decide what and like that. send a notice so that you can pay them uh, very important sign because you, we are preparing this uh, as a paper filing this is not an e-file so make sure you sign your form put all the information in here and send it if you are giving it to any preparer he will put his information here and then the form will be sent so so this was the 1040 NR and how to fill the 1040 NR there are uh, other forms which we will continue in the next chapter so preparing other forms schedule OI form 8843 schedule A uh, NEC 123 schedule OI and form 8843 are very important and they are mandatory so make sure you fill this and send it with your return in order to quickly fill this I would suggest you go to uh, the travel uh, get all your travel history from uh, the I-94 website I have put the link in the description go and download all your travel history that's very useful and very easy when you have that it's very easy to fill up these forms you have to determine the days you are present in US and show all of that into this so one important point make sure you do not sign the 8843 if you're filing it with your 1040 NR or it will be rejected so when you're sending it separately if you're not filing a tax return and you're just sending the 8843 form only at that point you have to sign that otherwise you should never you should not sign 8843 if you are filing it with the tax return let's let's go through both both of these forms okay so schedule OI uh, other information so this is a form required for IRS and you have to attach it uh, along with uh, your 1040 it comes like immediately the next form after 1040 in your uh, filing sequence I will show you the filing sequence later on in this video so let's go through this form quickly uh, should not take a lot of time so name uh, SSN uh, which country you are a citizen of India which country you uh, are claiming your residence uh, for tax purposes India because you are a non-resident in United States so it's India have you applied for green card no uh, were you a US citizen no a green card holder like the same question I don't know why they have it twice but yeah no um, which visa you were uh, at the end of that uh, tax year which is 31st December 2020 uh, F1 student have you ever changed your visa type uh, no for this person no it might be a different scenario for you but yeah. uh, list all the dates you entered and left United States during 2020 so for this person I am considering that he left US on uh, that's why like your travel history comes along very handy uh, you can calculate how many days so usual days are 365 and this person left US on 11th of January and I came back on 15th of February uh 2020 this should be 2020 this should be 20 okay uh so entered back in 20 uh so this is like around 35 days he was out so it's different for canada and mexico and they have to enter it here then give number of days including vacation non-working days um uh partial days you were present in us during 2018 2019 2020 so because this person came to US in 2018 uh, your travel record will is going to show you when you entered and when you exited yeah, you have to subtract all that days so uh, we are doing this calculation and like 180 days uh, this guy uh, was in US um, in 2019 he was 335 days in 2020 330 days did you file income tax return in any prior year yes uh, and if yes which form did you use so some people if they have used any online services like TurboTax that and if you have done uh, you you should enter 1040 though it was a wrong form uh, you, you should file an amendment for that uh, but uh, you have to enter the right form it's very important to to be very uh, true and transparent you should never never lie to any federal agency this affects you during any of your immigration things in future so this is very important so if you have done your taxes through something else have to uh, mention that so 
uh, for this person it was 1040 nr are you filing a tax are you filing a return for a trust no uh, and did you receive any total compensation of two fifty dollars during the tax year? No, he was thirty six thousand, and we saw into the W two worksheet. And then, if you are having any tax treaties, so you enter that tax treaties, and uh, you should enter how many? So this is basically a India tax treaty, U S India tax treaty. Same, uh, you can call it U S India tax treaty. Uh, and uh, the article number is 21.2 uh, claimed for 12 months and this is the amount which we have already entered in our form so yeah if there are multiple things which you can add you can you can add it here and this is total were you subjected to a tax in a foreign country so now this would be something you will have to consult your tax person in your home country that whether your home country will tax you for an income in United States or not. Usually, if there is a tax treaty, it won't be because it is to avoid the double taxation, but just make sure. And then none of this are applicable. Uh, so yeah, that is uh, Form 10 uh, um, Schedule OI for 1040NR. Uh, let's look at our next form, which is 8843. So 8843 form is a statement for exempt individuals and individuals with medical conditions. So it covers both. Uh, but we are basically exempt individuals. Uh, so uh, because of uh, substantial presence test, this form is used to do the substantial presence test. So yeah, filling out this, uh, this is very similar to the schedule OI form. So should be, once you have completed the OI, this should be like, very easy yeah enter your name your ssn your address in uh, in your home country uh, now this is like a indian person so indian origin person so india uh, address in united states as it says um, which visa were you when you entered us now this can be different when you entered us for the first time what visa were you on it may be a h4 it may be a h1 it may be something else so or a b1 whatever so enter that visa f is what you are on like this person is f visa because he entered in 2018 so we are considering that this is going to be um, f visa because that is the first time he ever entered US. current non-immigration status uh, this is a f1 student uh, so this is f1 student academic institutions is what shows in the instruction to put if it is F1. So I have put that full statement here. Of what countries you were citizen during tax year? India. What country issue your passport? India. Uh, passport number, you put your passport number here. And then the same number of days which you have entered. Uh, so for 2020, it was 330 days. For 2019, it was 335. For 2018, it was 180 days. So. So enter the number of days in 2020 you claim you can exclude it for the purpose of where did my phone go yeah 330 days because yeah you were only present in us for 330 days teacher trainees you're not a teacher trainee so you don't need to fill that out students so enter the name of the university uh, and the address of university in this box uh, then uh, whoever is your national uh, international office uh, coordinator or the contact person you can enter the name of that contact person here uh, whatever is your building name uh, university address phone number enter that then it asks you about your visa, us visa type if you held any different visas in like past six seven years you have to put that uh, put that in here uh, this person was on f1 visa for 2018 2019 so that's what is in here. Were you present in the United States as a teacher or a student for more than five years? No, no. So you, you were not in US for more than five years, like present in US. That's what, because you came in 2018. If, if it says yes, then like actually, then you're, you can file the non, uh, resident taxes. And then you're also applicable for social security. So make sure. During 2020, did you apply for 
uh, any affirmative action if you have applied for green card or anything yeah mention here and explain it in the box below whatever that piece is and this is for athletes uh, with medical condition and then like at here sign but you should not sign if you're filing it along with your 1040 NR remember if you're filing this separately if you're not filing any taxes then you have to sign if you're filing it with 1040 NR you should not sign 88434 okay okay so that was all about uh, the schedule OI and 8843 forms the other forms as schedule A, um, NEC, 1, 2, 3 schedules are very less common for international student and we won't cover that in interest of time. Okay, so filing your returns. Now you have prepared everything, uh, you need to um, file this. Uh, so we'll go through that now. Uh, remember April 15th is the last day to file your taxes. If you file after this date, uh, you may need to pay the interest and penalty to IRS if you owe taxes. If you do not owe taxes, then that's fine. Uh, IRS uh, will send your money back and your money is basically parked in their account for more days. So, uh, if you are using a preparer, he will most likely uh, use uh, e-filing to file your taxes. That is a very fast uh, way to get the returns. It's like within two weeks, like you get your returns back. But uh, if you're okay getting the returns back in six to eight weeks, like the money, uh, the refund file, you can self prepare, you can paper file. One thing I have seen last year is like, it took almost six months for IRS to issue the refund because of the pandemic. So just uh, something to be aware of. Double check few things uh, before you file. Uh, make sure your name is correct, address is correct, SSN, refund amount, bank details, most crucial. If you have wrong bank details, IRS will try to send you money, it will get rejected, then like they have to do all the other paperwork and then send you a check. And that is going to delay your um, delay your time to get the refunds. So make sure uh, check that. Signature on 1040NR. Make sure you sign on 1040NR. And make sure you do not sign no signature on 8843 form. So important things. So next is how to prepare the package and what are the sequence of forms. IRS wants you, like if you are doing a paper filing, it should be in certain order, all the forms and everything. So how to prepare a packet. Uh, so in your packet, the first things will be your copy of W2s. If you have multiple W2s, you will add those W2s. Um, second would be uh, your 1042S uh, form, uh, if, if it is applicable. If not, uh, yeah, don't worry about it then you are 1040NR, then you are 1040OI, and then form 8843, and then any other form which is applicable. So you can you can prepare this packet, and now where to file? So if you're sending this paper uh, returns, there are two places. Uh, one is if you are expecting a refund, and one if you have to pay the pay taxes. So if you're expecting a return, uh, the address is uh, given here. Uh, and uh, if you are uh, expecting some taxes, uh, uh, to pay some taxes, you have to send it to this address, to Charlotte. So Austin for expecting refund, Charlotte for paying. Okay. Our next uh, topic is state and city returns. So this is like a very another complicated uh, topic which we have each state has like a different law and like different tax brackets and for michigan it's like a flat fee 4.25 percent uh, california if you see like 13.3 percent like the maximum tax rate goes so each state has like a different different tax system and uh, we cannot cover like all the states in here uh, in my quick tax calculator i have actually calculated the taxes for michigan but that is just for reference purposes you can put your marginal tax rate there to see like what is your expected return if you want me to cover any specific state let me know and i'll try to make a video on that too much variables to consider while preparing the city and state taxes so we will not cover it in, in our video and uh, there are especially like a lot of uh, states have credits so like in your in michigan like michigan has like uh, heating credits property tax credits which help you to get 
certain um, uh, like it's it's a credit so basically like um, you get amount uh, whatever utility bills or like whatever rent you have paid or if you have paid any property tax you can get certain amount back and i have seen for students they receive more return than what they have paid in taxes uh, so uh, the refund value is higher uh, by using this so um, i have a, a lot of uh, understanding and knowledge about uh, the states and like how how to file this returns and how to maximize so if you plan to hire me i will make sure we'll go through like each and every credit which you can be applicable for and like we'll, we'll maximize your refunds finally few uh, things which i would like to say is i don't think like the tax preparation is as complicated if you have simple taxes you can you can always do it on your own but for any complex tax uh, situations you can you can go to a tax professional in my opinion it's very good to do your own taxes uh, because you understand how the taxes work and you can always take tax advantageous decisions for for your present year so you you can reduce your tax burdens one another important thing which i feel is like uh, best tax preparer is the one who will pay for himself he will always try to find out maximum maximum refund for from you and like whatever he can find out he, can, he will be paying for himself so whenever you are investing or you are interacting with a tax professional it's it's good either you you spend time learning all the taxes or you go to a professional and you try to get it and the final thought is like uh, i would uh, if if you really like what uh, uh, video and whatever content uh, i have done uh, let me know let me know through your comments and uh, please uh, like this video uh, subscribe to my channel and i will try to do more videos uh, for taxes if you would like or any anything related to international student taxes immigration uh, because i have been and lived through all of those so if you want something like that let me know and i, I will be happy to do it and the best way to thank me would be share this video with like uh, your fellow friends who would benefit from it give it to your uh, international student uh, uh, officer and uh, they can send it to like your international students uh, you can also post this on the facebook group of international students or like uh, indian student association or like any any student association and that is just going to benefit because this video is basically valid from now till april 15th or like somebody who is filing late can use it uh, let all this effort be good and should help everyone that's that's my opinion if you want to get in touch with me contact me uh, at uh, credence tax consultants.com and uh, email me at uh, info at credence tax consultants.com so uh, i really appreciate uh, you uh, watching this video thank you so much and have a nice day yeah be safe